Ian dragged me out of a toilet when I was uh, about 19. And I, uh, no, I wasn't, I was 20 years old. And uh, I uh, was in Samson and we'd recorded an album. Good job. Uh, head on. Okay. We recorded that album at his studios. And it was before we went out, we went out on tour with him after that, supporting him, right? And he was like my big hero, you know. And uh, we were listening back to this album and we were all sat in the studio and Ian's in there, you know, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's him. Yeah. <laughs> it's him, man. <laughs> and um, we'd been at the pub and we'd had a few beers. And the engineer was rolling this big joint, right? So he patted the joint around and I'm like, and he ins you know, <laughs> so I smoked this joint and suddenly I felt really sick, like I was going to like throw up everywhere. Throw, yeah. And I was like, oh no, whatever was in that, oh man, you know, oh, you know. And, and Ian's looking at the thing and he comes and he goes, who's the singer? I'm like, me, <laughs> you know, and he goes, cool vocals. I'm like, thanks, should go to the toilet? And I went, and I was so sick. I had my head down this toilet for about 40 minutes. I thought I was going to die. And, <laughs> it was oh, a bad joint. We could join. Oh, whatever it was, and the alcohol and everything. I mean, yeah. so finally he kicked the door in, and he goes, oh, yep, I think I can hear him. And there I am, this covered in, like, you know, just a disgusting state. <laughs> and there's my hero looking down at me going, yeah, drag him out. You know, like, oh, no. Come you know. With me. <laughs> and uh, he was really yeah. cool. He, like, you know, gave me it. I still, I don't... Mm. I think my ex-wife has. I kept the towel he gave me, you know. I mean, uh, <laughs> and the souvenir or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my ex-wife yeah. has got it. You know, along with Richie Blackmore's guitar, I got one of Richie's guitars that he smashed one night, Thank signed. You. you know, damn. And so, do, do you have a lot of things like like this, like towel of Gillan Sawa, the Blackmore guitar? Do you have a, anything like this? Um, Are you a collector of this kind of stuff? Like no, 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 no. Not, I mean, I don't go after it, you know, all the time. But something like, you know, one of Richie's smash guitars, you know, when so I was like, oh yeah, you've got to have one of those. I mean, if 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 that's like for me, that was just like, you know, lifetime opportunity. Getting well, the new stuff is getting a bit more trippy, you know, in terms of um, a bit more spacey, I suppose. Spacey? Kind of out there. You all know, right. Beyond. Is it for you something new for you like this kind of tripping stuff or yeah having a band that having a band that um is into just going going with stuff like that and creating atmospheres yeah. you know not being uh, not being scared that that you know the audience is going to sort of go it's been uh, three minutes and we haven't had a song that goes you know you know the, the no, they're just totally cool because they're just like, yeah, well, we like listening to this stuff. And um, did you feel that this kind of thing with the mating crowd, like they they were waiting all this for a heavy song, and sometimes they're not in the mood to play. With with Maiden, with Maiden, it w it was different because Maiden uh, has had, still does, you know, such a d defined style. Okay. You know, there's the way that Maiden works in terms of atmospherics and things like that is uh like that. yeah Fashion. it's 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 fixed okay. you know um and that's just the way that the you know that the the band is uh because you know the people the players are like that steve likes to have you know the drums and everything arranged like every drum fill you know you know goes absolutely you know, with with the bass guitar and everything, and it's completely uh, and this fixed. Kind of lack of groove that you were missing, like it's not a lack of groove; it's a different kind of different groove. groove you know, um, with with uh, uh, with Maiden, we always uh, uh, it was it was interesting. If you put me and Steve next door to each other, and we said, uh, you know, what do you like about heavy music? He'd say it's really aggressive. And that's why he likes it. I'd say it's really intense. Like a different thing. And it, it's just, you know, and when we were together, we tried to do the same kind of thing. I'd try and be like kind of intense about it. And, and you know, he's like the soccer player, just like, you know, put it, you know. And, and that's his 
that's the way he thinks which is cool you know because a lot of people like it and 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 that's all right and the way i thought was bang and when we were together we you know we spilled coffee everywhere <laughs> uh, you know uh, uh what we did in maiden was a great mixture of uh you know of that style and everything else you know uh um the i think the balance probably tipped more in favor of like the whole the the, the, the aggressive kind of thing um with when nico came okay you know because the, the groove the drumming groove changed um clive was much was had more of a um not laid back but had you know it was more of a uh almost like an ian pace kind of drummer you know was uh, a great drummer, yeah that. well clive was I, I really missed him when uh you know when he left uh i was kind of you know wow mm, you know and some of the songs the songs changed i mean number of the beast songs that we played on that tour they changed i mean with nico with nico in the prisoner has never sounded yeah yeah well that 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 was that was my moment of glory that intro that was clive was uh out of the room and uh, we needed something to play the drums to the intro and i i wrote the intro the bit doom back do doom back that's why the the the, the, the tom tom feel is boom 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 because I couldn't like do anything else, um, and then when he came in, I said, "Wow, could you do something cool like zoom, do, do, da, da, do, do, you know on the the bass drum?" Because I said, "Because you can do that, and I can't." Esse foi o grande Mr. Bruce Dickinson. Todo meu respeito do mundo por ele. Já está fazendo um som agora diferente do que ele fazia no Iron Maiden, mas é um monstro sagrado do metal. O cara realmente é uma grande voz. Você acabou de conferir mais um trechinho com ele. Próximo bloco só vai dar ele. Vai ter três videoclipes dele e mais um trecho dessa bela entrevista para daqui a pouco. Dois CDs, músicas ao vivo e digo mais, hein? nenhuma do Iron. Ele escolheu. Beleza. E o seguinte, agora vamos continuar então nosso bate-papo com o Bruce. Na real foi um bate-papo mesmo, né? não teve nada assim de entrevista, aquela coisa mais rígida assim. Uh, Bruce, o que você achou das mulheres brasileiras? Nada disso, foi bate-papo mesmo, contou um monte, vai continuar contando agora. Ao final desse bloco, desse, dessa entrevistinha, ele vai escolher um videoclipe. E aí na sequência tem mais dois do Bruce, é só aguardar, confira agora a Mr. Bruce Dickinson. Yeah. What about this new band? Like, it's still Bruce Dickinson? Would you like to change the name? Oh yeah, and put yeah, a name yeah, of yeah. a band. I'd like Bruce Dickinson to slowly shrink in little letters, you know. Um, so yeah, we've got plans for a name uh, for the next album, which we hope will become the name of the band at the same time. Do you um, have this idea already, or? Yeah, well, we had it for about a year, and then we kind of went, oh no, maybe it's too difficult a word. Uh, maybe we should think of something else that's more obvious and. We went through loads of different names, and um, uh, finally, uh, I called uh, Rod, my manager, then the other week, and said, uh, "Okay, we think we've got another name for the band. We're going to call it this." And he went, "Ah, oh. well, the original name he had was great. I never saw anything wrong with that." I went, "You didn't?" He goes, "No." I said, "Oh, cool. Okay, good. Well, we we'll call it that then, you know, because it felt wrong when I said it on the telephone. You know, uh, it's funny you." Um, when they were gonna, uh, the name for Balls to Picasso, at one point, was gonna be, it was gonna be called a thousand points of light, of like, thousand points, points of, of light. light. Yeah, you know, but I, I thought it sounded kind of um, uh, pompous, and in fact, um, th we were in this bar in New York. And we just finished the cut, and some guy came up to me and went, you know, oh wow, it's Bruce, you know, you know, what's the new album called? And I went, it's called, and I couldn't say it. I was just like a thousand <laughs> points of light. I thought, oh, I can't say that. You know, I said we don't have a name yet. <laughs> right. You know, we're gonna think about uh, it. Yeah, <laughs> think about it for another five minutes. You know, would like to choose a video to put in this program. Which one would you like to? Oh, uh, I'm just going to. I'm going to choose um, the one on which I got very cold, very wet, and which I think is the best video I've ever been in my whole life. Howard Greenall directed it. Top man, fantastic, and um, we made it with the aid of a, a, a brandy bottle. All these swimming around in the sea. We couldn't have done it without it. Just tears of the dragon. Oh, 
struggle to find a reason to find the time the place the hour waiting for the winter sun and the cold light of day the misty ghosts of childhood fears the pressure is building and I can't stay away
Far more your first solo album, like yeah. Tattoo the Millionaire. Mm -hmm. Do you like that album, or do you think it's different from what you're doing now? Oh no, I mm -hmm. I do like that album. I mean, I'm not one of these guys that uh, is going to turn around and say I regret doing you know what I did. I don't regret doing anything I've ever done in terms of you know music and stuff. I mean, I did it. I sang it. If somebody wants to turn around and say, don't you think that lyric's a bit dumb? I could say, mm, probably it is, you know. So but what? at the time, I did it. I did it. I enjoyed it. You know, so, okay, oops, you know. S some of the stuff I used to wear on stage, you know, some of the trousers, boy, are they dumb, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I right. did it. Well, you know, I take res full responsibility. Um, and uh, so, yeah, balls, um, Tattooed Millionaire. Um, was just a product of it was a product of a summer holiday. Esse foi Mr. Bruce Dickinson então comentando sobre seu primeiro trabalho solo, Tattoo Millionaire, na época que ele ainda estava no Iron Maiden e nem pensava em sair, certo? De fundo ouvimos isso aqui. A Live in Studio A, dois álbuns ao vivo, um no Studio A lá que foi numa rádio e tal, e o outro no Marquis, um dos maiores clubes londrinos de show, certo? Então foi aí, a entrevista com o Bruce Dickinson foi na verdade um belo bate-papo, o cara é muito figura, gente boa e tem todo o respeito do mundo, e além do mais tivemos aí estreias de Corrosion of Conformity e também de Mad Ball, dessa forma vamos ficando por aqui, valeu, até a próxima. <música> Let's go!